You're listening to The Soul Chronicles, the podcast navigating life and times in the sneaker industry, Hollywood, and corporate America. On today's episode of The Soul Chronicles, our topic is Snoop. Let's get into it. So Nikita, what exactly was your role at GBMI, which stood for Global Brand Marketing Incorporated, which was an international footwear licensing company? So yeah, I was the director of entertainment marketing, right? So we would be responsible for interfacing with the entertainment industry across all the brands. So we would go to Sundance with maybe the Pony brand or we would do an award show with one of the other brands. So everywhere entertainers in Diesel, we had, I think we had a Diesel house, didn't we? Wasn't there a cute little Diesel house on? I did not Rock? know there was a Diesel house. I worked diesel at GBMI too, but I worked in New York and I worked on like PR and communications, working with the journalists and stuff like that. So yet another stop on the Mohammeda and Nikita. <laughs> Nikita Drake. GBMI did not have an entertainment marketing division. They brought me in, actually, John, who was at Nike, Mm -hmm. had gone over Mm -hmm. there. And when they started talking about this entertainment work, he was like, oh, I know just the person. And so when they brought me in, I was like, okay, this is a lot of work. I'm not going to be able to do this by myself. So, of course, I uh, reached out to my sister, Mohammeda, Mm -hmm. to build this together. And we did. I was very proud of the work that we did there. And part of it, obviously, was the Snoop opportunity. I had such a really fun time working with Snoop. Obviously, being an L.A. girl, him coming from Long Beach, it was always just a a good time getting together. One funny story. So people who know me know that I traditionally don't drink, don't smoke, never did any of that. Not for any reason other than just not something I ever really got into. So we go to, we call Snoop and we're like, yeah, we want to bring you some sample product. And we also want to start talking about maybe some other designs. And at that point, I also wanted to just start it to float. We had hired an ad agency and they come up with a creative concept for some print ads and we wanted to float those ideas, right? So he said, yeah, you know, come over to the house, such and such day, time. Usually in celebrity settings, you don't want to bring a bunch of people to their house. So it was me, maybe one or two designers and that's it. And so we go over. When I tell you somebody was in the kitchen frying up some chicken, (laughs) it was so real. I tell you, it was so real. So we go in, say our hellos. Everybody. It was a house full of people too. But even in that, in terms of his circle, everybody was very respectful of the business. Mm-hmm. So we went to a space, had all our stuff laid out. And when I tell you this dude was about his business, please trust and do believe. Now, I've never been so high in all my life <laughs> from this contact I called. <laughs> but, but that aside, I was able <laughs> to make my way through, like I have never, Muhammad, I've never oh seen so God. much smoke oh in God. my life. No, you don't understand. And the whole time, I'm just me and a bunch of guys. I mean, that's the other thing about these right. industries, um, mm-hmm. at least back then. And I think that's changing. I hope it's changing. That is very male dominated. Yeah. So in order to get along, you got to go along, right? Yeah. So I wasn't there. I'd be like, um, excuse me, could you put that out? Because I really don't, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> So here I am. The dudes are cool. They're not indulging. The designers aren't indulging at all, but they're cool with it, right? Right. And I'm in the room. and I'm trying to, because again, our role is always as facilitator, making sure talent is okay. They're getting what they want out of it, making sure that the designers are getting what they want out of it, sort of judging the atmosphere in the room. Like, is this person getting tired? So you're just Mm -hmm. kind of, I'm just in the middle. I'm negotiating this inner, this exchange and interaction. Yes. But Muhammad, do you know how hard it is to do that when you are so high for the first time in your life? (laughs) And it would be with Snoop Dogg. (laughs) It would be with Snoop Dogg. But obviously, you know, we're some troopers. We're going to pull through. So Mm -hmm. we got everything we needed. Everybody was very happy. And we went on to get the, the brand launched and get the advertising campaign approved and Mm -hmm. shot. Once the product is done, and now it's ready for public consumption, you gotta market it. I mean, mm-hmm. product is not gonna mm-hmm. just sell itself. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. have to put it in front of the consumer, you gotta put it in the right places. And I think you had some interesting experiences 
working on the brand as well. So I was based in New York at the time. So we were working with one of the retailers, I think David Z, who had, yeah. a, bunch of, yeah, he had a bunch of shops. I mean, he could still be there. I don't know. I haven't been on Broadway in a while, but <laughs> he was probably like one of their biggest retailers at the time. So we were going to like sort of premiere um, this do- Snoop's Doggy Biscuits at the retail store. So I had to plan this press launch where we invited the press there. Snoop was there just kind of talking about all the shoes in the line and what his vision was. So I put that together. During the whole press run for the launch of Doggy Biscuits, I also ended up being on Snoop Dogg's Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous. They used to have that VH1 show where they talked about the wealth of different celebrities. And oh, like, wait, I, is that the show that Robin Leach voiced over? Yes, exactly. That's oh. it, right. And so then when they talked about like all of his assets and then they got down to his sneaker company, then I was like the pony rep and I was like there in the showroom doing the PR talk about Snoop being this global icon and our shoes and our shoe collection. Let's take a listen. In 2004, he partnered with ultra-hip footwear company Pony to create his signature sneaker label called Doggy Biscuits. When Pony was looking for a celebrity partner, Snoop Dogg was definitely at the top of the list. He is a pop cultural icon. People want to buy whatever it is he attaches his name to. One proof? In December 2004, Snoop released 5,000 limited edition biscuits, which hit department stores and sold out in just three days. Why? Because every sneaker from the Snooper Sly to the Snooperlicious has this dog's paw prints all over it. Everything in the line is completely customized by Snoop down to the packaging in the box. Everything that I do on the end zone, baby, because if you got my name on it, you got to have my touch on it. And that's a Midas touch, because Snoop's earning up to 500 grand a year from his big biscuit biz. Definitely off the hands with the shizzle when you do it with big Snoop. Hi, this is Mohameda. So when Nikita and I decided to do the Soul Chronicles, we weren't really sure where to go or how to start. First of all, I'm in Accra, she's in LA, what do we do? Then we heard about Anchor. It's been really easy and super great. First of all, it's free. They have everything you need to record your podcast on your phone or your laptop, and they'll help you distribute your podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and other platforms. It's everything you need to make your podcast. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Now back to the Soul Chronicles. Snoop is one of those people too, I think, like as big as he is as an artist, he still has like this like really kind of like, I would say humble spirit, like Muhammad. Some people can just just dismiss anybody who they think is not important, but he was just like talking to everybody, like making sure like he made eye contact with people. And I just had so much respect for him because people be extra and they, I mean, come on, they're rock stars. I'm not going to be mad at them if they are, but when somebody doesn't behave that way, you definitely notice it. And it said uh, just a lot about who he is as a man, as a person. Yeah. And I think, but don't you think too, because again, like for me, this podcast is not about talking about celebrities. Really, it's about me and you and our experience. Yeah. And these celebrities happen to be a part of it, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that is such an important trait for all of us to foster, mm-hmm. for all of us to master. Because without humility, you really miss the opportunity to learn, listen, and grow. You really miss the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm not the biggest thing in the room. Even though from a status standpoint, you may be. Mm -hmm. And I would venture to bet probably mm, definitely upwards of 75% of his success can be attributed to his humility. Because even when we were doing the shoot thing, he was not afraid to admit like what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's part of that humble 
spirit. One thing I love about Snoop, he is just never afraid to be different. Like, never afraid to push the envelope. It doesn't matter that he's this, like, LBC, you know, whatever, crip, whatever they want to say. Like, he does not care. He will do anything that he feels. He thinks about a reggae album, he'll do it. So his sneaker line was very unique. They really did think about sort of every aspect of the customer experience, for instance. And I think, Mohammed, you reminded me of this before we got on the call. The shoe box was designed in a really cool way that really I don't think had been seen up until that point where it had a Snoop Dogg silhouette that was perforated that you could pop out. Right. <laughs> you remember that? It was really customized. I mean, he was, like I said, he was very, very involved from the name Biscuits is what he calls shoes. And then there was the, the line consisted of the Snoopa Dupa, which was like for active life and everyday wear. There was the Snoopa Fly, which was the basketball inspired, which kind of like a high top. Snoop loves basketball. He's a football coach, so definitely had that athletic side. There was the Snoopalicious, which was the casual shoe for business meetings and dressier occasions, okay? In case you want to get down with Snoop on your business, on your dress up. And then it finally was the Snoopa Slide. And those were these bandana print slippers that he said were for kicking it in the crib, right? So they had like when he did the red bandana print, blue bandana print, Carolina blue, black, and I think maybe like gray or something like that. So just everything was really about like Snoop's West Coast, Long Beach culture and California street culture. That was really kind of like the the, the, the the concept for the line. And again, it was just really authentic. I mean, I hadn't seen anything like that from any other brand. I think the basketball ones were kind of like, those were like the traditional kind of like, I'm just going to say Air Force One kind of silhouette. Mm -hmm. And the Snoopa Dupa, I think were more like the Converse kind of canvas high top. And then the other ones were all pretty unique. I was trying to figure out what happened with the line, but I think it was done on a limited edition. I think there were like 5,000 pairs that were made. And so then that was worldwide. So I think like once those sold out, it was just a limited edition line altogether. You know what? You're absolutely right now that you mentioned that. Um, that I think was the strategy going in that it would be just very special um, very unique, very collector driven. Once the designer was put in place, then there was the next step was setting a meeting with talent and with the designer to really sit up and learn about him. What was important to Snoop? Like, what did he want to convey? What did he want these shoes to look like? What should they feel like? And so once he gave that input, then the designer would go back and sketch out what the shoe is going to look like. And they then we set another meeting where we could present those sketches to him, where they would talk about the materials, the colors. Snoop's brand was, it, it was right in alignment, as you said, it's authentic to him. He, he didn't try to be like this other kind of guy with like some kind of sneakers that he wouldn't wear. It was just very true to Snoop. And it wasn't something that everybody was going to like, but some people who yes. felt it, you know what I mean? It, like, I feel like he's, when he stays true to himself, it's like whoever's going to like it, likes it. And then if other people don't, fine. That's how the shoe, that exactly how his, his shoe line was too. Yeah. And it's funny because I remember being in some of those closed door conversations when he wanted to do the slipper. Mm -hmm. And for people who don't understand what I'm talking about, it's that moccasin type um, slip on. If you had the corduroy print on it and you just slipped your foot in, and a lot of guys back in the day, they would wear them with their white socks and uh, they would always have the back folded down where they was walking on the back of it. Right. <laughs> so when he wanted to make that, obviously the owner of the company just did not understand that. Right. And was like, you want me to do what exactly? And oh he was like, this is what I want. And I just remember watching that discussion and the head of the brand being like, yeah, no, we just don't see how people would actually like want to buy that. And then I'm well, trying to- fast in, uh, forward to Kanye, Yeezy, and his like crazy psych yeah. slippers that are selling for like a gazillion dollars. So I'm like, Snoop was ahead of the time. And not only that, Mohammeda, not only that, that's true, yes, but also people was already buying them. It's $20 at the indoor swap meet right now, at that point, right? So in my mind, it's not like, oh, 
people would not buy this. I'm like, dude, people are already buying this. What he's telling you is he knows what his audience wants. He knows what they will buy. Mm -hmm. And he just wants to offer them the same product, but with his own special twist on it. Right, right. And so that was the other argument that we were making. Like, we know this consumer group a little bit better than you do. So I'm going to recommend you go with the guy you hired Mm -hmm. to be in business with him. We would be remiss if we did not at least spend a second just talking about Snoop. Regardless of what you think about his music, his lyrics, his politics, his whatever you think about that, what you cannot dispute is his ability to always have his finger on the pulse of what's happening in pop culture and find himself right at the center of it. Mm-hmm. That's That goes to your point. So if reggae music was the thing, then he was there. And it was always really authentic. Like he wouldn't be just doing some stuff just to be doing it. Right. Put his own stamp on it. If all the actor, all the rappers turned actors, then he would have him a bomb role in some, right. in some movie. Right. To date, Snoop's got nearly 30 films under his belt, including 2001's Training Day and 2004's Starsky and Hutch, where Snoop stars in the role he was born to play of him. When the tables turn and the tides turn, I should say, and people started having their own shoe lines, he was right at the center of that movement as well. And I think that also speaks to his ability to surround himself with the right type of management and advisors. And that's something that we've learned. I mean, we talked about that's why you and I have continued to work together through the years is because we found the right mix. Mm -hmm. And I think as people navigate this industry, whether it's footwear, Hollywood, corporate America, you do have to find your right kind of advisors, mentors, your friends who may have a little more experience than you that you can just bounce ideas off of. Because that is what's going to help to keep you relevant, informed, and ready for whatever your next move is. And thank everybody for hanging out with us on this episode. And yeah. Yeah. Do you have questions? Yeah, I just want to say if anybody has questions about the design process, any questions about doggy biscuits that we might know the answer to, or just questions about celebrity partnerships, we're happy to answer if we have the if we have the answer so please feel free to comment and just definitely join us on social media with any questions as well yeah and i also think too if we don't know the answer trust me it's a phone call away from us to to get the answer to some of your questions and then if anybody has a pair of the doggy biscuits like if you definitely could comment <laughs> and let us know uh, right. sort of what you have and if you have a photo still you maybe put it in the comments as well so that would be really exciting Thanks for listening to The Soul Chronicles, the podcast navigating life and times in the sneaker industry, Hollywood, and corporate America. Be sure to join us for another exciting episode.